All right, so the other day I went out, flew my, flew my drone, uh, you know, getting the videos, getting the pictures, doing all the cool stuff. And it took a lot of planning for me to go and do that. And I got done with that, came back that night, and I saw on the news that Amazon got the authorization from the FAA to go forward with Prime Air. Now, for anybody that doesn't know what Prime Air is, it's Amazon's fleet of drones that they're gonna be launching. And essentially, if the item that you order from Amazon is five pounds or less, then they will use a drone to deliver it to your backyard within 30 minutes of you ordering it. So I was kind of curious what other people were saying about this, uh, specifically other drone pilots, and I couldn't really find anything. And I thought that was a little strange because this definitely is really cool, but it's gonna have some <laughs> negative side effects. So I'm just here to tell you my honest thoughts on what this is gonna do to the drone community and new people joining the drone world and all that kind of stuff. So here we go. Howdy y'all, my name's Aaron Spieler. For anyone that's new here, has never seen any of my videos before, this isn't the normal type of video that I make on my channel, but this is something I feel passionate about. Um, I don't want it to sound all doom and gloom, but I, I think that somebody needs to give an honest opinion about where this is going to affect drone pilots the most. So that's what I'm doing here, trying to make a video, especially for people that are trying to come into the drone world uh, and all that. So. Anyways, before I get too much into all that, just wanted to give you guys a quick background to where I've been with drones and my journey through it and everything like that. So, back in the summer of 2018, bought my first drone, the DJI Mavic Air, the original, and I'm still using it. Just made a video about that a couple weeks ago, whether or not it's still worth it in 2020, and I'll link that up above, above one of the sides. <laughs> And uh, you know you can go check that out, but I recommend you actually watching this one first if you are just researching drone stuff and all that. But anyways, got that drone and started flying it, started getting good at it, was trying to figure out all the little quirks because my wife and I were going to be starting a travel vlog. And what better way to get that epic B-roll than flying a drone? So that was the goal. And then my brother-in-law was getting married and my soon-to-be sister-in-law asked if I would fly the drone at their wedding. And I, of course, would do it, and not for any money or anything, just because it's practice and family and you know all that good stuff. But I started to feel like that maybe, you know, I don't know, it sounded a little sketchy. Like maybe that wasn't completely legal. Maybe there was something else that I was supposed to do. So I actually called the FAA. Uh, and yeah, they told me that it would be illegal if I didn't have a commercial license because there was gonna be people there and companies and different things that could be seen as a commercial flight. You know, it could be seen that way or whatever. And we'll get a little bit into that a little bit later on what they define and all that. But anyways, so I went ahead and got my Part 107 license, which is the license you need to commercially fly a drone. And yeah, it was all good. And I didn't actually end up being able to fly the drone because it ended up raining, but at least I was prepared. And it wasn't a waste because we were starting the travel vlog and we were gonna be putting stuff on YouTube. And even though we weren't planning on monetizing YouTube right away, we did have a website. So if people came from YouTube videos to our website and clicked on affiliate leaks or did anything else that was going to give us growth or money, Technically, any footage that was used on YouTube that would get people to the website would be considered a commercial flight. So it's a very tricky, slippery slope. You know, there's so many little ins and outs. It's always changing. There's a lot of stuff coming and uh, it's just, it's crazy. So that's pretty much my little background up until this point. I've only flown the drone for my pleasure and for my own business, if you will but I am planning to try to get into more legitimate commercial stuff and I've applied for a few things, but anyways, maybe more on that later at a, when I've actually done some stuff. But with that said, let me jump into the computer real quick and actually show you guys some stuff directly from the FAA to try to give you guys a better idea of what to expect.
All right, so as you can see here, we are on the FAA's uh, Frequently Asked Questions page and specifically for, you know, what is the definition of a recreational or hobby use of a drone? Because this is oftentimes very disputed and, you know, anyway. So let's just get it directly from the FAA. And by the way, this was updated on April 16th of this year. So this is pretty, you know, you can't get much more recent than this. <laughs> so as you can see here, a recreational or hobby UAS or drone use is flying for enjoyment and not for work, business purposes, or for compensation or hire. So as you can tell, it's very black and white. There's your textbook definition. So, you know, it's kind of hard to really, you know, it's, it's clear, but there's gray area. This is, as there always is with the federal government, but you know, so just you gotta take that for what it is and you really gotta pay attention to, you know, if you're using your drone, capturing photos and videos and then how is it being used. So here are a few rules, right? Under the recreational flyer and modular community based organizations. So, you know, you come here and you still have to register your drone you have to fly for only recreational purposes, the 400 feet rule, which still applies for even commercial flights. You, there are waivers and stuff for it. But um, another big thing here is that, uh, you know, never fly over any person or moving vehicle. That's why it was going to be with an issue in my sister-in-law's wedding, because there was gonna be people there. And without a commercial license, like I'll show you in a second, you know, I wouldn't be allowed to fly over them. So that's another reason it wouldn't have been a legal flight in itself. So, you know, you can go through and read a lot of this for yourself, but I think it's always good to um, just always be informed, always be ready, all that kind of stuff. So here, if you come to the certified remote pilots, right, including commercial operations, right here, the first, you know, learn the rules and it says, review a summary of the part 107 rules. Now I've already got it open here. This is from the FAA, it's back in 2016, as you can see here, but it is, you know, it's from their website, so it's still the most up-to-date thing they have. And, uh, you know, here it does say, let's see, where does it say it? Um, this paragraph right here. So small unmanned aircraft may not operate over any persons not directly participating in the operation. So as a part 107 holder, I could fly over people as long as each of those people have been briefed and are technically a part of the operation. So if I have a crowd of 100 people and I'm flying the drone around them and they're all waving at it and everything, that is legal because they are a part of the operation. What this does mean though is that you, are, you can't go flying around people in a park. You can't go flying around people in a city, right? Even if the airspace is legal because you're flying over people that are not a part of the operation. So even as if you have your license and you think, oh, well now I can fly in Manhattan. No, you can't because it's still over people. It just, it's not legal, right? So, and then you go post that footage, someone's gonna report you, someone's gonna notice, and it's not worth the thousands of dollars worth of fines that can potentially come from that. So as you can see there, I know it wasn't super thorough. There's a lot of extra stuff there, but it would behoove you to do that research before you decide to buy a drone. Don't get caught up in the fantasy of it. And, oh, look, everybody, look at all these cool drones. People are, oh, the best five DJI drone. Like, stop, you can't worry about that stuff if you don't know that what you're wanting to do with the drone is going to be legal or not. Are you willing to put in the time and the effort to learn things and the money? Are you willing to take the risks? Are you willing? You know, it's the, the days of just buying a cheap little drone and getting these cool pictures and photos, you know, it's, it doesn't really exist anymore, right? And pretty much coming up soon, there's supposed to even be a test that hobbyists are gonna have to take, right? So, you know, it's, it's, it's just, you really gotta be prepared for the future. So with that said, there's a few more things I wanna say coming up uh, in the future. So let's just take a look at that real quick as well. Okay, so now you can see on this uh, next page for the FAA, this is the entire thing of what they're calling remote ID, right? So essentially, what is it? Remote ID is the ability of a UAS in flight to provide identification information that can be received by other parties. Now, as usual, that's very vague, but essentially what it is, is a way for people, specifically law enforcement and, and uh, emergency teams and things like that, 
to be able to identify if they see a drone, they can immediately see all the information about that drone, who's flying it, what their licenses are, all that crazy stuff. So obviously this is a controversial thing in terms of privacy, but what's unfortunate about it is this is coming. And so I would urge you to think about the fact of, are you going to comply with remote ID, which means you're giving up a certain amount of privacy or you're gonna to have to fight that battle, or are you gonna be an outlaw? Are you not gonna abide by it? And once again, take the risks of getting caught, you know, and, and that's something you have to decide. I will always urge you to do it the correct way so it doesn't ruin it for everybody else or yourself. But, you know, I can't tell you what to do, but anyways, We'll just keep going here. Uh, so enough with that page. This next one talks about there's gonna be three ways for drone pilots to be able to meet the identification requirements for remote ID. There's a standard, limited, and then flying without remote ID, right? So there's this kind of blurry image here. I actually clicked on it and it brings up this better image as you can see. So on the far left here, you can see there's the standard remote identification drone. So this is basically allowing the drone to broadcast remote ID via radio frequency, right? Publicly available and the general public, as you can see right here, it looks like they're gonna be able to find your stuff. So it looks like this isn't just, you know, to the law enforcement, maybe it will be different. Maybe they can't see your name and your address, but we're not really sure. There's not a whole lot of information that I've been able to find officially through the FAA that actually says to what extent all of this will be. So we're still you know, having to wait. Once again, something you should be thinking about before you spend all this money getting into it. So then you have a limited one, and pretty much the only thing that changes about this is that your drone connects to the internet as well, but for whatever reason, because you're limited, you're still constrained to still going 400 feet high and 400 feet wet, uh, away from you in kind of this half spherical bubble, as you can see in the image here. So it's their way of really making it difficult. You're still using remote ID, but now you're you know, inc incredibly limited onto where you can fly. So what's the point of that, right? So, you know, once again, we'll have to wait and see, but there's the second way of doing it. And then this last way on the far right is an FAA recognized identification area or FRIA. And it looks like in short, you know, once again, you can come and look at this picture for yourself, uh, but, you know, they're going to be pretty much um, like a, what is it, the AMA, right? How they can go fly in certain locations. It looks like it's gonna be the same thing. So you don't even get to fly the drone where you wanna fly it, you just get to fly it for fun, I guess. And this is if you choose to not be a part of the remote ID, fly a drone that doesn't have it or not use it. And once again, I'm not really sure how this is all gonna work. They're still trying to figure it all out, but, <clears throat> It's just something you gotta think about. As I keep saying, you just, this, you know, don't get overwhelmed with what drone you should buy. You should be thinking about how are you gonna be able to use the drone and is it really worth spending all that money, right? So let's see, what's this next one? Okay, so this is the press release, as you can see by the date here, May 5th, 2020, so pretty current. And this is actually where they release the information on the cohorts, right? Which this is the group of people, the group of companies that are actually a part of the, like working with the FAA to develop remote ID. And it's through this little paragraph here. So you have Airbus, Airmap, Amazon, Intel, OneSky, Skyward, T-Mobile, and Wing. Now I'll be completely honest, you recognize some of those names, but I don't really know what all they have as a vested interest into remote ID, I have my ideas and my suspicions, but obviously those are all huge companies working with the federal government and there's reasons for that and some of those are speculation right now, some of them are somewhat obvious like Amazon, you could see why they would wanna be a part of it, but it's just something to be considered. And this last one has to do, once again, May 14th and you can see by the title, FA targets 2021 for launch of drone remote ID service, right? So you come down here and it's saying essentially um, that they are trying to release this, right? By 2021. So that's next year. This isn't like a far away thing. Of course, it could get delayed. A lot of things with the federal government can take a lot longer than what they say it is. But, you know, you just 
it's coming soon. This isn't like something, it's not like, oh, I can just get a drone and I enjoy it until the time. Well, you might not have very much time left before you're gonna have to deal with this situation. I also wanna point down here that it once again confirms those same eight companies with a little bit more detail uh, about why they might be into it. You know, you see here, Skyward is owned by Verizon. So they're gonna have a vested interest because T-Mobile is a competitor, right? Wing is owned by Google. Well, Google's always involved with everything. So, you know, I think it's something that you really need to pay attention to looking at all these different resources, trying to really educate yourself on this and be prepared for what's coming in the future. So like I said in the beginning, I know this isn't like a sexy video. It's not, you know, meant to be all flashy and cool and get you hyped up. It's trying to get you to really think about this because I wish someone had made a video like this when I had gotten into it that had explained all this stuff. Of course, things were different, less information, whatever. And uh, yeah, staying on top of this, maybe taking a few months to decide, you know, seeing how things change and all that different stuff. But anyways, I'm not gonna keep rambling. I'm hoping that this was helpful for somebody. I hope that it got somebody to think twice about it and maybe I helped somebody not waste a whole bunch of money. <laughs> And if that's you, or if you have any other questions, please, please do not hesitate to put them down in the comments. Um, if you like this video, please like it. I would love, love the feedback. If you don't like the video, feel free to dislike it. And uh, please consider subscribing. I, like I said, I don't really do videos like this, but I might in the future, and I try to just provide value and entertainment any way I can within this video and photography travel realm and uh yeah until the next one see ya